If you're watching this, you probably want to get better at playing saxophone, right? And my observation is that if you just spent more time getting the phrasing right on one small chunk of music, you could improve immeasurably compared to hashing through a load of music without getting the phrasing right. I'm pro saxophonist Jamie Anson. You're watching Get Your Sax Together. And this week's free online saxophone lesson, we're going to delve into one little segment of music dialing the phrasing right in, and I'm gonna show you that you can really transform how pro you sound just by working on your phrasing and getting really, really forensic with it. Okay, I've got the segment up here. It's Maceo's tenor solo cold sweat. I've got a four bar loop set up. First of all, let's have a little listen and then I'll explain what's going on. Get it. Ah. One more time. Get it. How funky is that? So, when we're talking about forensic phrasing, this is what we're talking about. We're talking about getting every single detail of the phrasing. And I mean every single detail. So, let's go back to the start of the clip and let's slow this thing right down and take it in chunks. Now we can do this together, we can workshop it together. Okay, let's just start with that bit. Now, I've got a shorthand that I developed through my Phrase Like a Pro course. I'll tell you a bit more about Phrase Like a Pro later, but that is the orange writing you can see underneath. So, the first note is tongued. So, I call that kickoff tonguing. Your tongue is on the reed and you're gonna have back pressure built up Momentarily, just before you release your tongue, you release your tongue and the note pops out. So you get a nice, crisp, clean attack to the note. I don't need my headphones for a moment. The next note is called staccato tongued. That means that you tongue the note and you get your tongue straight back on the reed as fast as you can. Now, a lot of people don't play staccatos short enough. <laughs> I'm not saying that you should, you should always play staccatos short like that, but if the music demands that you should, and I like to teach polarized phrasing to begin with, which is if the note is long, it's long. If it's short, it's short. So that's the first two notes in slow mo. Now you really need to put some air through the horn and make sure that that tonguing is really crispy and short. Let's hear it again, slow. Da 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 da, long short, ta da. Let's play it a little bit quicker now. That was half speed. Let's speed it up to about three quarters. Da 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 da. You see how crisp and short that is. That's what we're looking for. We need to replicate exactly what Maceo is playing. Now, if you're not playing it exactly like that, that is the first thing you need to work on before working on anything else, okay? So if you're playing it like, or, however you're playing it that isn't right, you need to eliminate that until you can play it exactly as Maceo plays it. And I do mean, Exactly. Now, most people's problem, well, a lot of people have a, a basic problem with articulation, which I, I cover completely in Phrase Like a Pro, but a lot of people's problem is that they bring extra phrasing to the table, which is a habit that they can't break. So you might bring habitual vibrato or um, little note scoops or bends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> something like that. You need to clean the slate. Uh, and in Phrase Like a Pro, I've got an exercise called the uh, the reset, where you just get rid of all that extraneous phrasing. For example, in this whole passage, there's no vibrato. So if you play with any vibrato, leave it off. And if you can't leave it off, because it's a habit, that is the habit you need to break. Okay, now then, let's now move on to the next set of, of notes to close out the bar. You can hear James Brown absolutely punching us in the face with his uh, vocal rhythmic punctuations. Okay, so this time we've got a staccato note. 
Then we've got a tongue to note, a tenuto note, just like straightforward tongue to note. And then another staccato note. And then to finish off, we've got the same phrasing as we had in the first part of the bar. Okay, let's hear Maceo. Okay, one more time. Okay, now that is what you need to be sounding like. Let's let's hear it at full speed now. Oops, I went the wrong way. Hang on. Here we go. Okay. Unless you really get into the weeds with the details, you're never going to improve your phrasing. You're never going to sound more pro. <laughs> and by the way, part of this whole equation, which I haven't even mentioned yet, is the groove and the rhythm. You're going to have to invest your heart and soul into that groove. You're going to have to feel that groove in your whole body. Da -da, <clears throat> da -da, da -da, da -da, <clears throat> you know, like James, but you can tell from James Brown's just those little vocal things that he puts in, how much groove he's got. And the same is true for Maceo. So you've got to throw yourself into this groove. You've got to, every, every molecule in your body has got to be feeling this groove and moving to that beat. If you're just kind of trying to play the rhythms that you see on the page and you're plucking them out of thin air <laughs> without those notes, hanging right on that grid. You've got to feel that groove in your whole body. And if you're not feeling your whole body like pulsing with that groove, you are never going to be able to play this well. <laughs> so groove number one. Second of all, doing what we're doing, which is really delving into this phrasing. Now, moving on to the next bar, we've got uh, the same chunk as we had before, first of all. So you'll see that there's a few things that are repeated. So, for example, the first two notes, they are repeated. The second group of three notes, they're repeated. So you're getting pretty good, <laughs> pretty good value for money for each bit you learn. Now, here's an interesting piece. The end of the second bar into the third bar. Listen. Get it. Ah. Oh, listen. So what's happening here is he's hitting the A-sharp hard and then the volume is tapering down. So the next note, the B, is quieter and it's a slurred staccato. That means that you slur into the note and then you cut it dead with your tongue instead of tonguing it and then cutting it off with your tongue. So you're slurring into it, then cutting it off with your tongue. <laughs> Let's hear Macy again. Get it. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> it's so funky. <laughs> All right. So that's that detail taken care of. Now check out the next bit. Bow, better, bow, better. So he's doing the bisky B flat, almost, uh, most likely. And you'll notice that there's the note is tongued, the next note is tongued, the A is tongued, and the G is short. But there's a there's a fall in pitch from the B flat, which you can kind of do with your voicing. I've got videos on uh, note bends and things like that. So listen to me, Cio. Bow, 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 bow. That is a detail that you must catch if you want to sound funky like Maceo. So we're almost there. We've got one more bar to go. We've got a staccato at the end of the third bar. 
Then we've got the, um, both notes are tongued. And then another long short. And then finally. Now, we, <laughs> now we've got a big problem here because um, the, fight, the, uh, the third last note is half tongued. Now I've got a whole video on half tonguing, so go and check that out. But basically it's a way of muffling the note. And then you'll see that the, uh, where is it? <laughs> Down here. It's in brackets, the note is in brackets, it's half tongued. You can do it one of two ways, but your tongue is left on the reed for that note and it makes the note more muffled. Now, as a result for the following note, which is the second last note, the A, you're gonna pull your tongue off. And it's the act of pulling your tongue away from the reed, which de facto articulates the note after a half tongue note, the A in this case. So I'll do the last five notes real slow for you. So you're kind of going, do it, did that it, do it, did that it. <laughs> right. Now these are the little details which really make all the difference. And if you're not doing them, you are not learning how to phrase, okay? If you're not doing these details and working out how to do it, you are not gonna sound like Maceo, you're never gonna sound pro, no matter what you play in your band, in the pub, this is the stuff which is gonna transform your playing, let me tell you, 100%. <laughs> All right, let's now start putting the whole thing together. So hey, just before we start putting the whole thing together, if you want to improve your sax playing across the board, you haven't checked it out already, go and check out my free saxophone success masterclass. The link is there. It's full of a load of useful information. It's really going to upgrade your practice and how fast you improve on saxophone. For your tone, you're improvising the lot. Licks and tricks is absolutely awesome. So go and check out the free saxophone success masterclass. The link, you'll see the URL there, but the easiest thing to do is just click the link in the description, fill in your email, Hey, presto, I think you might have to confirm your email. Then you get instant access to the workshop. It's absolutely awesome. Right, let's get back to the Maceo and finish off the job. Okay, dogs, now we've got all the details. So let's play it through a little bit slower and make sure we get all these details. It should sound something like this. I made one mistake in there. I made one mistake in there, <laughs> which was in the last bar, I slurred the first two notes and they're supposed to both be tongued. If you make a mistake, you've got to iron it out, okay? So I went, but it should be. Subtle difference, but it's the subtleties that count in this game. Right, I'm gonna do it one more time, a little bit faster. That's more like it. Okay, now a bit faster. Oh. And that time, I threatened to add a little bit of vibrato, which isn't there. So that was my mistake. Now these are the little details I'm talking about. So let's hear Messier player. Then what you want to do is you want to play along until you sound like a shadow of the actual solo that you're copying. So I'll attempt to do that as well. Get it. happy with that. Now, you're going to learn much more from doing that in all that detail than you are from <laughs> trying to learn a whole solo um, and just bashing your way through it and playing the notes randomly. It's the phrasing and the groove that are going to move the needle for you. All right, 
Quite a short and sweet lesson today, but I cannot tell you how important it is. If you don't dial in and get that exact phrasing, you are never gonna sound as good as you could. And if you do that on just a few little pieces, believe me, your playing is gonna be transformed. <laughs> so, as I mentioned earlier, it's all actually in my um, Phrase Like a Pro course, um, which I'll put a link in the description so you can pick it up. If you wanna sound, if you wanna bring the emotion and the energy and you know the real true communication of every line you play in saxophone, you need to get yourself a copy of Phrase Like a Pro. Believe me, it's absolutely awesome. <laughs> All right, but if you want something free, go and grab the Saxophone Success Masterclass and uh, check out the whole of Maceo's solo, by the way, on Cold Sweat, because it is absolutely awesome. It's all you need to know about playing funky saxophone. It's an absolute masterclass. Now, of course, we did a funky tune today, but it works for jazz. In fact, inside the inner circle, I'm gonna be looking at a little bit of Charlie Parker as the um, bonus video. And there's a lot of other cool stuff inside the inner circle. You'll find a link in the description for that. So until next time, <laughs> make sure that you practice hard, practice smart, and enjoy your music. Take it easy, guys.